Hey there! Uh, today we're not going to talk about a pen. Uh, I, I was going to talk about some inks. Now, I've done some ink videos in the past where I show you new and interesting inks. This is not one of those videos. Uh, a while ago I did a video of how I got into fountain pens and people seem to really appreciate and like that video and then someone suggested that I should do a video like that um, but on inks instead of pens too how I got into inks different kinds of fountain pen ink uh, I, I think that's a, that's an interesting idea now the, the ink story is a little bit more unstructured than the pen story I think this is because I consider pens and inks to be a sort of continuum. There are people who really love pens, and there are people who really love inks, and I think a lot of people are somewhat in the middle. They kind of, you know, they, they like inks because they allow you to use pens. But some people are very extreme. They, they really love pens, and they only use inks because you cannot use a fountain pen without ink. And there are some people who love inks and only use pens as a vehicle for their nice inks. Um, I think I lean more towards the pen end of the spectrum. So I, I, I don't, I'm not a, I have a reasonable collection of inks, but I'm not an ink collector. I'm more of a pen collector. So this story may be a little bit unstructured, but I'll try to deliver it as structured and as, as concise as I can. All right. So for me, the ink journey started as I s told you in that 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 my way into pens video uh, with Waterman Florida Blue. I got a set. A ballpoint and a fountain pen for my grandfather uh, for my birthday, uh, a Waterman Hemisphere, uh, which contained a bottle of, of uh, Florida Blue. That's this bottle. See, there's a little sticker on there. Right now it contains Bay State Blue. So that's a whole different ink. Um, but this this was that very bottle. Uh, and and it's, I just, it just went out at some point. Um, so this was my first bottled fountain pen ink. I'm not going to talk about cartridges. I've used cartridges for, for many years before that, but but this was the first bottle ink. Um, I still think Waterman Florida Blue is an ink that every fountain pen user should have. It is not a spectacular blue. It's not the most intense of blues. Base State Blue is, is better in that regard. Um, but it's so well behaved. It's a really nice ink. It doesn't feather, doesn't bleed through. It, it flows in pretty much any pen. It's easy to clean, that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a really nice ink. And besides, these bottles are very cool because once they start, to, the ink level starts to run a little low. You can sort of put the bottle like that, and you can fill your your pen from the sort of from the side, if that makes sense. Um, the, I think the next ink I got was so far. I'm, I think a lot of people start with something like this, and then I, I went on to Parker Quink, which is a quick drawing fountain pen ink. Uh, I, I got this at some point. Um, that was before I was really seriously into pens, uh, just because I wanted to, you know, ink up a pen with this once in a while. Um, this is still the original bottle, and then there's still quite some of it left. Uh, this is not my favorite ink, but it's it's a decent, you know, reliable, robust ink that, that you can use uh, without much trouble. So then um, I got into Caron Dash, and that was uh, they they come in bottles like this. Uh, at least that's the original bottle. I think they're going to change something now, but uh, this is the bottle. These bottles are highly impractical. There's very little ink and a very thick bottom of glass, so it's it's. If you have a pen with a big nib, it's hard to get it in. But okay, whatever. Um, this I purchased, I think. Bef yes, this was before I got the Visconti Opera Elements, which really got a lot of stuff started in my pen collection. Now, I got not this ink, but I got Kaundash Storm, and I, I, I ran out of that. It's a purple ink, but comes in the same type of bottle. Um, and I, I like that ink. It was purple so far. I'd only used blues, uh, and, and I, I enjoyed the, the purple. is a whole different color, and yet it was still somewhat restrained. It's a very dark purple, so it's, it's not too flashy, uh, and I, I, I like that. Um, then I got that... Um, that Visconti Opera Elements pen, and with that came a bottle of Visconti Black. Now, it was not this bottle, it was just a straight plastic bottle, sort of a, a rectangular bottle, um, but this is the, the, the normal, regular Visconti bottle, um, and that was a black ink, and I thought, well, that's interesting, but it was a sort of a very dark, it, no, it's not a dark gray, it's, it's a black, but in a very broad nib, it, it gets a little grayish, and I was starting to get interested in calligraphy at that point, 
and I didn't really like it. So then I went for another black ink, uh, and that was I don't have the, the I didn't have the bottle at hand, but it was by Gerbin Perle Noir. This is another uh, ink by that same brand, and I liked that because it was a lot darker than the Visconti black. Um, and then I, I started to get all of these, and I got all the colors. I think there are 30 or something. And one by one, I just purchased those, tried them out. Um, it's not easy to get ink samples in the Netherlands, uh, so I had to buy the full bottles, but there were some nice deals going on. I could get them fairly cheaply. Um, these inks I've used for a long time. I, I really used them for, for quite a while, and if you check out some of my earlier videos in which I uh, I cover specific colors, so I said this is the video on the blue inks I have, and I cover all the blues, you will find a lot of Gerbin inks, because this was my brand, until I found out that they were a bit bland. The colors are a little bit restrained. Um, some of them are more so than others, but a lot, I think, are not very vibrant. They all seem a little bit washed out. Now, I'm, I'm not saying anything negative, as I just said, this was my ink brand for a long time. But I started to shop around a bit, and then I, uh, at some point, I, I contacted Brian Goulet, the Goulet Pen Company, and I said, okay, I want to have something for my calligraphy that is really black, a really black fountain pen ink. And he said, well, then you should try Noodless X Feather. Uh, I, I, I ran out of that, uh, but this is another bottle. This is the type of bottle I bought at that point. This is a four and a half ounce bottle. I think that's about 135 milliliters or something. These are big bottles, and they're fairly inexpensive, relatively speaking. Now, they come with a little eyedropper, so you can sort of fill eyedropper pens. Some of these, maybe all of these bottles actually come with a, a sort of a, a, a preppy, platinum preppy pen, which you can use. Um, and I, I really like that. I like the, the, the idea of getting a free pen that you can immediately use for the ink, but I also kind of like the ink. Uh, this is the Noodles Nikita in the... Uh, uh, you know, Mr. Nikita with the Nivas uh, Poronium, that, that uh, 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 famous pose. Um, and I, I, I turned into a bit of a noodless fan. That's actually what got me into noodless pens. Um, so that's that was the next step in, the, in the, the journey, I would say. I still have a couple of noodless inks. Right now, I don't use them that much anymore because I got quite some interesting alternatives which are a little bit easier to obtain here in Europe. Um, and I'll continue about those in a second, but there were some steps between that. I was the pen show, and uh, a friend uh, from Germany gave me this ink. It's a limited edition Sailor Gentle ink, and yes, should you wonder, it does have that interesting Sailor smell. Yep, still there. Um, and I don't know which ink this is, because I, I cannot read the Japanese and I forgot the name. doesn't really matter. Uh, the Sailor inks. I, I only have two. I found them to be pretty reliable. They're, they're, they're nice uh, inks. They seem to work work pretty well. Um, sip of tea, sorry. All right, then I take a break to build up the tension. At some point, I got some Pelican inks. I have the first one I got was the Duo Highlighter ink, but I got that with a pen. And I thought, let's try this. This is not particularly expensive. It's 30 milliliters. I think I paid 3.95 for one bottle. Relatively speaking, that is not the cheapest. But I mean, this is not $20 a bottle or something. Um, I got the turquoise and I got a purple. I don't really use them a whole lot anymore, but that's mainly because I found my ultimate turquoise in another brand I'll cover later. Um, but these are these are well-made inks. Um, and then something big happened. Uh, because La Couronne du Comte, a, a site where I, where I purchase quite a lot of pens and, and ink and, and you know writing paraphernalia, um, starts to carry diamine and private reserve inks. I got some diamine. Uh, I, I think in my first order there was Ox Blood and some others. This is Burnt Sienna. I like how they put the name of the ink on the cap, so you can actually see it if you look at them from the top. I have them in a desk drawer, so that's useful. Diamine. Yes, I think it's safe to say that Diamine is one of my favorite ink brands. I absolutely love it. And they come in these nice bottles, nothing too fancy, but they work well, have a nice, fairly wide opening. It's easy to stick a pen in there. Uh, they don't suffer from the problem uh, these these Gerbin bottles suffer from, or the, the Carandash bottles suffer from, which is that they're very shallow. 
uh, I, I and you know there's a huge range of range of colors available um, some of them more flashy than others but you know there's something for everyone and these inks generally speaking the ones I've used which is about I don't know eight or ten or something are very well behaved they're the nice inks that, that work well you know do well except that sometimes you get a bit of gunk in my my feet that, that happens with some of the inks especially the the pumpkin someone sent me a sample of that and it, that gives you some gunk in the the feed sometimes but it's easy to wash out it's it's not a big deal I also got private reserve private reserve makes these really scary bottles uh, I I don't have a whole lot of private reserve inks I think I have three uh, and this is a huge diameter I can't really show you but it's it's huge it's like a paint jar or something, or, or some people call them jelly jars. Um, nice inks, vibrant. And this is tanzanite, an ink that I particularly like. Uh, it's uh, sometimes referred to as the laxative of inks because it makes dry pens flow better, according to some. Um, and it's it's you know it's it's well behaved stuff. It's it's good stuff. Very vibrant. A lot of colors available. Then, uh, believe me, this story this story is not going to carry on for hours or something, we're approaching the end, I think we're about halfway through now. Then I got some Mont Blanc ink, I was in a, I think I bought this in a store, a physical brick and mortar fountain pen store, I saw this and I, I just uh, bought it, um, Mont Blanc has these interesting bottles, you see that little sort of bridge thing going on around, so that once the ink level runs low, you can sort of collect the ink in this bit, and then stick your pen in there. It's, it's a fairly interesting reservoir thing they, they design. Now this is Midnight Blue, it's an iron gall ink, which means you have to clean your pen very well after use. The beauty of this is that it's waterproof, so it's, it's a very nice uh, fountain pen ink, I, I think. Uh, Mont Blanc inks, as with anything Mont Blanc makes, are not the cheapest in the world, but you know, they are... I, I have five, six, I think, uh, all pretty well behaved, some a bit prone to feathering, but, but many of them I, I kind of enjoy. I got my first Chinese pen, and with that came, interestingly enough, a German ink by Lindauer. Uh, Lindauer, I think it's a peninsula, or maybe actually a small island in, in Germany, I always forget. Um, you can only get this ink in Lindau, uh, so I, don't, I really don't have a clue why they sent me this with a Chinese pen, but someone did. Uh, a decent ink, maybe a bit on the dry side, but it's it's well behaved. You see, it's it's kind of like these these pelican bottles. Uh, uh, so that's that's interesting, um, funny, but but a bit exclusive because it's it's hard to obtain. All right, so there are five more to go. Um, at some point, I got the uh, the the platinum mix free set. This is ink that is made for mixing. Some people like mixing inks. Some, some inks should not be mixed. Base State Blue is one you should not try to mix with others. That, that's a warning, it's actually on the label. Um, these inks are, you can mix them. It actually comes with a bit of a thinner, so you can actually uh, dilute them a bit. Um, and I thought, okay, now I'm going to do a lot of ink mixing. I think I did five or six and I just gave up. I don't know, I should pick that up again. Because it's a very interesting idea to try and mix your own ideal purple or whatever you have. Um, so it's so interesting and, uh, and and pretty well behaved, nice inks these. All right, then I got some Lamy ink. Um, I found Lamy ink to be a bit dry. This is the green; it's a bit dry. I've heard some other people say that the blue ink is a bit dry, um, but it's it's well behaved, I would say. I don't use this one a whole lot, except when I use my 2000, the Lamy 2000. For some reason, I like to put this in a 2000. Uh, one thing I like about this uh, uh, bottle is that it has blotting paper in there, not for the paper, but to wipe off the nib after you fill the pen. It's a nice touch, and uh, the form follows function thing that, that Lamy does. Um, okay, then I got some Edelstein ink. This was a gift with a pen I bought. Uh, this is by Pelican, so Edelstein is sort of the, the, the luxury branch of, of Pelican inks. Ink of the year, this is the amber. Uh, well behaved, nice ink, and of course a fancy bottle, which is also what you pay for. Same goes for Garandash. It's not a cheap ink, but you, yeah, you know. It, I think sometimes people actually pay for stuff that actually looks nice. I guess there's nothing wrong with that if, you, if that's your your kind of thing. It does look cool on your desk, so you know. I got a Delta ink uh, with a Delta Dolce Vita pen. And I have thrown that away. That was a yellow ink. It was useless. Uh, it, it comes with, the, at least it used to come with the pen. 
it was just it was illegible. Doesn't matter. You can put it on on paper. You just can't read what you uh, what you actually wrote. So I, I don't really care much for that. Um, it had a bottle that was just like the the pelican, this kind of shape. Another bottle that's like the pelican shape is this thing by Cross, which I recently got. I understood that this is actually made by pelican. At least that's what someone said, and I have no reason to doubt him. Uh, it's made in Germany, so that that would make sense with pelican. Um, I found this to be a nice, reliable ink. It's uh, it's a simple blue. There's also a black. That's the only two colors available. Uh, it, it works well, so you know that, that that should work. Now, before that, somewhere, and I just have to reach around my desk here. Uh, I got this ink. This is by Ackermann. Ackermann is a, a Dutch fountain pen store. They they make ink in this bottle. You can only buy this Ackermann. I get a lot of questions about that. It's an Ackermann exclusive. P W dash ackermann.nl and you will find this um, these are really cool bottles 150 milliliters of ink and I mean if you know what, what, what we know here's the Gerbain bottle so it's these are big bottles the beauty of this is there's a little glass marble in the neck there and what you do is you turn it around and you turn it around again and then because of this glass marble ink is strapped in the neck of the bottle you stick in your pen you fill it up and once you're done you can sort of uh, release the trapped ink and you got your bottle back, which I, I really uh, I, I, I love that that feature. It's 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 wonderful, very pleasant to use. Of course, there are many inks. I'm not going to show you all 30 Gerbain inks or, or a number of different Noodles inks. This is roughly the the, the well, my my journey, I suppose, into the world of inks. Um, there are many other inks. There are ink brands I have not used. Uh, um, uh, Sailor. I believe makes inks which which I've never tried, and now, now I'm trying starting to doubt. I, I don't think I've ever used them if if they exist. Um, and there's there's a bunch of, of of you know brands that I have not sampled. Rohr and Klinger. Someone sent me a sample. And I've used that and I like that. But there are ink, I mean I I do not own every ink ever made, and I don't own every brand brand of ink ever made. So. The goal of this was just to give you a bit of an, an, an overview of, of, of you know how I how I, I, I got these inks and, and, and what I like best. So far, I have to say, I really find myself leaning towards these Ackermann inks. Um, as I said, big bottles, you get a lot of ink, so you better like it, otherwise you, you've got a lot of ink to throw away. Um, but they, they work really well, flow well, have some nice shading. Uh, I have heard reports of some clogging. I personally have not experienced that with, with the four I own. I find myself using this a lot, and I've I found myself using um, a diamond a lot. Uh, so if I were to pick a top three of inks, I would say Ackermann is definitely among them. Um, Waterman, if nothing else, then for the Florida blue, and the um, the diamond inks, and that's something I could live with. Some inks I will replace. Noodles Apache Sunset. Once I run out of that, before I run out of that, I'll buy a new bottle because it's such a magnificently beautiful shading ink. Um, some inks I will not replace. A lot of the Gerbain inks, once they're gone, they're gone. I don't really care. Uh, the Visconti Black, probably not something I absolutely need. So I think a lot of fun is to be had with ink. Trying to find your ultimate purple or red or blue or whatever it is you like. There are some people I know that have one or two inks. They don't care about inks. I mean, they just care about the pens and they just throw in an ink that's easy to maintain. Nothing wrong with that. There are people I know that have dozens and dozens of inks. Nothing wrong with that. Can be a lot of fun to experiment with that. Uh, I know some very active ink mixers who really try to put stuff together and make their ultimate inks themselves. All of that is fun. So it's all part of the fountain pen experience. Uh, I think it's very normal to start with a cartridge filled pen, but you will outgrow that most likely. And at some point, you will start to use bottle ink, and that's when the fun really starts because it's a lot of fun to use bottled inks, fill up your pen, clean them afterwards, that kind of stuff. I, I really like that, and for me, that's, that's an important aspect of the whole fountain pen hobby. So, this was just an overview of inks. Uh, I, I hope I haven't bored you to death. If I have, then I apologize, but it would be kind of pointless because you're dead. Um, if you're not dead, I hope you liked it, and then um, that's all. Let's do it. So uh, I'll see you later. Bye bye.